This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It's Thursday, July 2nd, and right now on Good Morning Indiana. Knowing that a date doesn't drive us, but the data does, um, we are prepared over the next two weeks leading up to July 18th to go to stage 4.5. Indiana is pressing pause on the back on track reopening plan. Working for you this morning, we're breaking down what's behind the change and how this new in-between phase affects you. We are coming back. Indianapolis is coming back. As the summer travel season gets underway, Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett wants visitors to know the Circle City is open for business. This morning, details on the new marketing campaign helping local businesses bounce back from this pandemic. It's that being anxious about COVID impairs your sleep, and when you're not sleeping well, you're not thinking straight. Concerns about COVID are making it hard for some people to sleep, and that's leading to an increase in mental health issues. Working for you, we've got tips from a psychiatrist that will help you rest easy and improve your mental wellness. We want to thank you for joining our team here on Good Morning Indiana on this Thursday. Raphael, it feels like a Friday for me because you know I'm taking a <laughs> three-day weekend for the holiday. Maybe a lot of other folks at home doing the same. So I'm slightly jealous, and because of that, Lauren, I'm going to quote your favorite, your oh. favorite 1960s Motown group, Martha <laughs> and the Vandellas, because, Todd, we are looking at a possible heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> we are, Raphael, and I'll be here with you uh, tomorrow. So, Lauren, enjoy uh, your couple days off. Uh, but you are going to be enjoying a lot of heat, uh, unfortunately, across the area. As uh, Raphael mentioned, uh, possibly heat waves heading our way. You need three days of 90 degree temperatures or higher for it to be considered a, an official heat wave. We got to 90 for the first time yesterday. I think we get there today and definitely over the course of the weekend. Live look outside. A beautiful start to our day. Humidity is actually a little bit lower this morning. And temperatures are in the 60s in northern locations. Peru and Muncie, uh, very comfortable at 64 and 67. Seven degrees. Marion at 63. Kokomo's at 64. Uh, so get out there and enjoy the nice morning. The workout this morning, probably a little better than this afternoon, simply because uh, it's going to be cooler. Skies will be mostly sunny throughout the entire day today, and we'll see high temperatures get up to anywhere from 88 to 92 degrees. I'm expecting about 90 right here in India. The 92, probably a little further off to the west. The 80s to the east. Anyway, you look at it, though, it's a hot day for us with temperatures above normal for everybody. Lauren. All right, Todd, we'll look at the sunrise right now over central Indiana. This is our view of I-465 at Arlington Avenue. This is on the southeast side and down below, if you look closely, you can see traffic is moving along just fine, both eastbound and westbound. Right now, around the metro area, no crashes, no major delays to slow down your Thursday commute. It is 6.03. We are learning new information this morning about a deadly fire on the northeast side of Indianapolis. This one happened at the Firethorn Trace apartment complex on Rimwood Lane around 10 o'clock last night. Fire officials say they found a small fire on the first floor apartment and a victim inside. The person, a 62-year-old man, was pronounced dead at that scene. The cause of the fire is still under investigation at this hour. Fire officials say there were no working smoke alarms inside that apartment. We are also working to learn more about a deadly shooting also on the northeast side. Police were called out to East 30th Street near Arlington Avenue around 8.30 last night. There they found a man suffering from gunshot wounds and took him to the hospital where he later died. Police say the shooting could be the result of a road rage incident. We'll continue to bring you the latest updates as we learn more. Raphael? The, uh, the time now is 6.04 as we turn out to the latest on COVID-19 and its impact on our, on our state. The governor is expressing concern with a slight uptick in the number of cases in recent days. Last Friday, 595 people were hospitalized throughout the state. But by Tuesday of this week, that number had risen to 668. That's an increase of 12%. The state health leaders also say the percentage of tests coming back positive, which have been trending down, has started to rise slightly in recent days. There have been nearly 4,600 confir thousand confirmed positive COVID-19 cases in Indiana and more than 2,000 deaths. 
For the first time since announcing his back on track plan, the governor is delaying some parts of the reopening process, Lauren. Yeah, Raphael, July 4th was actually supposed to be the start of stage five, but as can take cases here continue to rise, he says we do need to open a little bit slower. So our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with what that all means for you. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Lauren and Raphael. So compared to other states, Governor Holcomb says that Indiana is holding steady as far as an uptick in cases, but we are seeing that rise in COVID-19 cases, and that's why he's putting his back on track plan on pause. So like you said, we were supposed to go to stage five this weekend, but now we're going to be at stage 4.5. This is the first time we have seen a delay in the governor's plan, but he says it's not going in reverse. It's just hitting the pause button. So this weekend, we should be moving into stage five, and instead, we're going to be at stage 4.5. The change in plan means for the next two weeks, bars and nightclubs will be limited to 50% capacity and restaurants will be at 75%. Gatherings will be limited at 250 people. And with the calendar now turned to July, many school districts are set to resume in-person classes in less than just 30 days. Holcomb's thoughts on going back to school are clear. Yes, they still should plan to open um, and uh, and uh, receive students in, in the facility for instruction. Coming up here, you said less than 30 days, so July, August time period. This is, this is when the planning is occurring. State Health Commissioner Dr. Christina Bach says there is science and data behind the decision to open schools as planned, and they feel strongly that students can safely go back to school. Now, Indiana is not the only one taking these steps back or hitting pause on their opening plan. Michigan has closed indoor, bar, indoor, indoor bars in some parts of the state, and then uh, Florida, Texas, California, and Arizona also taking similar steps to hopefully slow the spread of COVID-19. The governor hoping this will help us get back on track. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. The time right now is 6.07. Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett has announced a new $1 million marketing campaign to start bringing people back to the Circle City. It's called You've Earned It. The marketing campaign will focus on dining attractions, live music, and hotels in the city. One business owner we spoke with says that Hoosiers have done a great job following the guidelines, and he's hopeful that Indiana will continue to move forward and not see a spike in COVID-19 cases like some other states have. I'm really proud of the way Indiana's handled it and the way that the Indiana city citizens have handled it. Um, and I hope that we don't end up reverting like Florida or Texas is right now. The marketing campaign will include things like discounts on hotels. You'll also hear advertisements on the radio, TV, and YouTube. The city plans to pay for this with the Federal CARES Act funding. Well, new this morning, the state is placing a temporary hold on the payment of claims seeking the $600 federal unemployment benefit. And Lauren, we're talking about the PUA payments, the pandemic unemployment assistance that mostly goes to gig workers, that $600 weekly amount that will run out at the end of July. Well, the state has seen an unusual increase in the number of people applying for these dollars, and this may impact Hoosiers who've done nothing wrong. And hopefully we're back processing those uh, very quickly here. What it means is that, uh, you know, to some extent, they may have to wait and or call us and make sure that they can regain access to an account if they've been locked out. It means they share some characteristic with uh, claims that have been identified as fraudulent. Obviously, not everyone that's locked is fraud, um, but the goal was to make sure that we cut off access to fraudulent actors, and that may have caught up some legitimate claims in there. So again, that hold will be temporary. This department tells us the action they're taking does not impact people filing claims or receiving payments for regular state unemployment. Well, social distancing, financial stress, and health concerns can take a really big toll on our mental health. The Rebound Indiana is sharing advice and resources you can use right now to cope with the impacts of this pandemic. You might find yourself staying up later these days, maybe scrolling through social media, or just worrying about a number of issues. So Scripps reporter Megan Thompson shows you why being tired is not the worst issue tied to a lack of sleep. These are healthy, normal people that are usually going about their lives, but now are starting to be more depressed. Not surprised, but still concerned. Dr. William Kilgore and his team started collecting data back in April, specifically on how people are feeling. And we're finding that the rates of uh, suicidal thoughts are about eight times higher 
than we normally see. Dr. Kilgore, a psychiatry professor at the University of Arizona. So far, they've seen depression rates three times higher than normal. And those meeting the clinical criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder, four times higher. So it's about the rate uh, that we see among people coming back from combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. But a way to take action against the struggles of mental health lies in lying down, sleep, a somewhat solution. So it's not that being afraid makes you more suicidal. It's that being anxious about COVID impairs your sleep. And when you're not sleeping well, you're not thinking straight. Dr. Kilgore explains less sleep means less engagement with the frontal areas of the brain, impacting your thoughts and decisions. To shut down and rest, Dr. Kilgore stresses the importance of going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time every day. Plus, put your phone down. Light plays a big role. Maybe nine o'clock at night, and you're looking at your, your blue screen for a while, and it tells your brain that it's actually only six o'clock. So your brain doesn't want to go to bed for another three hours. So even if you feel uneasy, it's important to find ways to rest easy. Well, experts say if you're struggling with suicidal thoughts, you can talk to a counselor or reach out for help available 24 hours a day at the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That number is 1-800-273-8255. You can also visit the BeWellIndiana.com and you can find additional resources right now at the IndieChannel.com slash rebound. Lauren, the 4th of July weekend, as you know, is traditionally a time to travel. But the pandemic may cause many detours. Coming up, our Alyssa Donovan explains what to expect and how to stay safe if you're traveling. But first, let's make a house call with our very own Todd Clawson. Good morning, TK. Uh, Raphael, good morning to you and good morning to everybody at home. It's another hot day for us. This temperature today will be climbing up into the 90s, making it a great day to head to the pool. If you do so, drink plenty of water and make sure you have uh, that sunscreen on as the UV index is high, burn time only about 10 to 15 minutes. We're into the 90s today, tomorrow, the day after, and into the middle of next week. All about that coming up. We'll talk all about that coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. The time now is 6.12. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Click or call today. Welcome back. Well, we're heading into a holiday weekend, but this isn't like other 4th of July's we've celebrated in the past, at least when it comes to holiday travel. So our Alyssa Donovan explains what you can expect if you're venturing out this holiday weekend. Alyssa, good morning. According to AAA, we're not going to see many people flying this holiday weekend. Instead, most travelers are opting for road trips. But even so, those numbers are going to be down, with the expectation of around 700 million trips, a significantly lower number of travelers for the 4th of July than previous years. The pandemic and social distancing seems to be a main concern for people, keeping them from venturing out. It's also a concern for those who are choosing to travel. Several states have decided to close their beaches for the weekend to keep tourists away. But outdoor destinations are forecast to be busy this weekend with people heading to lakes, state parks, and national parks across the country. If you want to do something local, Indiana state parks are open with some restrictions. Gas prices are about 30 to 40 cents a gallon less than this time last year, making a road trip a cheaper and easier option for travelers. And if you do plan to travel this weekend, the CDC recommends that you think of some safety guidelines before you go. Be sure to bring a mask, maybe some gloves, hand sanitizer, and cleaning supplies along with you on the trip. And also be aware of social distancing guidelines. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. All right, thank you, Alyssa. And the waterways will be likely a very popular place here over the holiday weekend across central Indiana and really much of the Midwest if you're taking a shorter road trip because we're all going to be locked in with heat and somewhat humid air. But I think the heat is going to really uh, steal the weather headlines over the course of the next couple days. Outside right now, just a few fair weather clouds as you look from downtown off to the north. Yesterday we had some visibility issues with some patchy fog. Obviously not the case here as you look on that northerly direction. Direction. Visibility is unlimited on this a Thursday morning. And to the north, temperatures really, really comfortable this morning. We're in the 60s from Tipton to Peru. And then eastward towards Muncie and Richmond, 73 in Indianapolis. Yesterday afternoon, if you are out, 
We kind of kicked in a northerly wind, so that wind changed direction. That helped to drop the humidity, and that's going to continue to help us out here throughout the course of uh, the day today. By the noon hour, up to 85 degrees with nothing but sunshine or high temperature today. That'll top off right around 90 degrees. And I mentioned the humidity. Earlier in the week, when I talked about the dew points, they were in the upper 60s to low 70s, even the mid 70s at times on Monday. And that is a very, very uncomfortable, but they're getting better. We're in the 60s here this morning, but they actually drop heading into the afternoon hours. So that is good news. Whenever you have dew point temperatures in the 50s, you're in pretty good shape. So while our temperature is going up, our humidity isn't going up. Uh, so that helps things out, at least with a little more in the way of it being comfortable throughout this heat wave that we are going to experience. As far as clouds go, a few off to our west, that's where they stay, where you see that band of cloud cover. That's also where the best chance of any showers will fire up today. And that should remain off to our west, as you see here on TrueCast uh, in parts of Illinois. So forecast a dry day this evening if you have plans lower humidity temperatures in the 80s with many people off tomorrow now you may be heading out uh, for some outdoor dining and you'll work up a little bit of a sweat uh, getting there but once you're seated especially if you're in the shade I think it'll be fairly comfortable but look at the forecast for the holiday weekend 92 tomorrow 93 on Saturday and Sunday it's a dry weekend for the most part there's a very small chance of a spot storm on Saturday Sunday, 20% chance of a scattered storm during the peak heating of the day. Uh, but the big issue, not so much the storm chance, it is this right here. Uh, the heat that we are going to be dealing with, not only through the holiday weekend, but into the middle of next week. This potentially is going to be the longest stretch of 90 degree temperatures that we've seen here in central Indiana since the big heat wave we had back in 2012. So you just kind of have to buckle up for a prolonged period of 90 degree temperatures with just small rain chances is in the forecast Sunday, Lauren, through the middle of next week. Todd, thank you. We're keeping a close eye on traffic as you're heading out on the roads right now. This is I-70 near State Road 9 to our east where traffic's pretty quiet this morning. We'll continue to keep you updated if there are any issues for your Thursday commute. I think has alarmed people is that they get this uh, notification about the new operating system and that it en enables these apps. And I think there's a lot of confusion about what the status of that is. Well, this morning, we're clearing up some rumors and misinformation about COVID tracking apps on your cell phone. If you've updated so your phone recently, you may have noticed a COVID-19 exposure notification. So I almost interrupted you. I was so excited to tell you this, that Google and Apple, right, they've been working together on software that would allow a tracking app to work on your phone, right? But listen, that is not the actual app. See, states would be the ones to develop COVID-19 tracking apps, and so far only a handful have said that they would. When they do, it will all be very different than what other countries have done, especially when it comes to privacy protection. You'll see much more of that right here in the USA. Contact tracing apps was first released in Asia with a very different architecture created kind of a, a bad reputation for these apps more generally. And what we found in our research is that the public doesn't really understand the differences between these different systems. So we have more details on this. This is how it will all work. The Apple Google system would not use GPS to track your location. Tech companies and the government would not have access to personal information. Now, people would willingly upload their positive COVID status. Then anyone in close proximity of that person that had the app as well turned on would then be notified. That's how that all would work. An East Coast couple is showing off their gluttonous greatness. Love that, whoever wrote that, love that. In today's Trending Six, see how they're stepping up to the plate to prepare for this annual hot dog eating competition. Lauren? All right, well, the new Cheetah Chaser Water Ghoster is now launching at Holiday World and splashing at Safari. You can be one of the first to ride it all thanks to Good Morning Indiana. So this morning, it's your chance to win a pair of ticket vouchers to the parks. All you need to do is be the sixth caller right now. Your number is on the screen. That's 317-269-1459. Good luck to you. And hey, if you don't win, keep trying. We're giving away more tickets tomorrow. It's 622. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. It is 624. Raphael, it is time to talk about what is trending at 6. 
So I was looking for a bottle of Pepto-Bismol here around the house because every time I see this story, I just feel like, you, you know, I'm not eating all these hot dogs, but yeah. it, it's a lot. So you know what they say, the couple that gorges together, right, stays together. I don't know who <laughs> says that, but someone says that. With the July 4th holiday approaching, so is the infamous annual Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Competition. So Connecticut couple Mickey Sudo and Nick Weary are training with a, a light snack of about mm, 90 hot hot dogs all they ate those all in 10 minutes the pair actually met at the famous hot dog eating competition two years ago and they've been training together ever since so love at Ugh. first sight or at first bite i guess like i don't know yeah. that's a lot that is a lot and we're always rooting for joe chestnut he's been in the studio actually a few <laughs> times Raphael. He so has. yeah he is the champ all right well new york state is turning to humor to try and get people to wear those masks during this pandemic this psa stars a character who looks like jason from the friday the 13th slasher <laughs> horror films and in it he's walking around the streets of new york city scaring people off while trying to fit in but there's a twist. The real reason people are terrified is because he's not wearing a protective mask. The tagline of the ad reads, wearing a mask can be scary, not wearing one can be deadly. Pretty creative. That is very creative. And a milestone this morning, Lauren. Eddie and Kathy Cabello are our hometown heroes. This is our 100th day of shout outs here on Good Morning Indiana. Eddie and Kathy, it says college bound students gain access to higher education through their program, Project Stepping Stone, which of course this time around has gone virtual. Congratulations to them and much success with that program. Now let's check your forecast on this Thursday morning with our very own TK. Yeah, Raphael, it's a good forecast for us. The humidity is down a little bit, and this morning it's actually pretty comfortable out there. Here's a live look in Greencastle where the sun is starting to brighten uh, the skies there across western Indiana. And as we go throughout the course of the morning hours, we'll see our temperatures warm pretty quickly. We'll be up to about 78 degrees already by 10 a.m. with mostly sunny skies. It's a hot day for us, but the humidity not as high today as it has been the past couple days. Uh, that's the good news in this forecast. Uh, but today, probably the second day in a row, we get to 90 degrees. And if we don't get there today, we definitely get there over the course of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and into next week as this hot air continues to build in. The other thing that changes today, we take the rain out of the forecast, not in the forecast for central Indiana today. So we'll enjoy mostly sunny skies. All right, Todd, thank you. Well, the holiday weekend is right around the corner and stores are overstocked thanks to the pandemic, but that can mean great deals for you. You, our consumer reporter John Matarese has a look at what you should and shouldn't buy this weekend so you don't waste your money. This is the biggest holiday weekend during this pandemic summer and stores are overstocked with merchandise. So if you head out, you'll find some amazing deals right now. You might be thinking about fireworks in the pool, but DealNews.com says you should also think about grabbing some great sales taking place this weekend. DealNews.com says a great way to get out of the heat is to hit the mall at some point this week. Stores are marking down summer items, and the best news is that whatever you buy, you can still enjoy for two more months. Now, great 4th of July deals include summer clothing, swimsuits, patio furniture grills and window air conditioners some of the biggest sales on outdoor items in fact will be at home depot and pottery barn now you might want to hold off on laptops and tablets just a little bit longer deal news says the big back to school sales start right after the fourth of july that we don't waste your money i'm john matteries good morning indiana this is good morning indiana working for you now on Good Morning Indiana on this Thursday morning, here's a look at your 6.30 news feed. Police are looking for clues after a woman showed up to a northwest side Indianapolis gas station with gunshot wounds. The woman walked up to the Speedway station at West 56th Street and High School Road just before 2 this morning. She's in the hospital and police say they don't know where the shooting took place. And Metro Police say a shooting that left a man dead on the northeast side may be connected to a road rage incident. Police were called out to East 30th Street near Arlington Avenue around 8.30 last night. There they found a man suffering from gunshot wounds. That man later died at a hospital. In more local news, a man is dead after a fire at an apartment on the northeast side of Indianapolis. This happened around 10 o'clock last night at the Firethorn Trace apartment complex on Rimwood Lane. 
A 62-year-old man died at the scene. His name has not been released. Fire crews say there were no working smoke alarms inside that apartment. And police have released the identities of the two young people killed in a crash on I-69 in Fishers. Indiana State Police say 19-year-old Marcus Paget of Spencer and 17-year-old Elizabeth Robertson of Pendleton died in that crash. This all happened around 5.30 Wednesday evening on I-69 southbound near 106th Street. Officials say their car swerved to avoid a shredded tire in the road when the driver lost control and hit a semi-truck. The Colts and other NFL teams may be looking at a shorter preseason. ESPN is reporting that the league will reduce the number of preseason games this year from four to two because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, NFL players will still have to approve that plan. Another report in The Athletic says the league is considering having fans sign waivers saying they will agree to not sue teams if they contract COVID-19 while attending games. Welcome to Good Morning Indiana on this Thursday. I would say that on a day like today, Lauren and Todd, you are all welcome to come over here in Franklin and sit <laughs> by my uh, air conditioner, or we can go to a pool somewhere because it's gonna be hot. Yes, and I don't know if you guys have stepped outside yet today since you're working from home, but it yes. is already warm out there early this morning. Todd, what does that mean for the rest of our day? You know, a warm start usually means a warm finish here to our days, Lauren, across central Indiana, at least on a normal weather day, and that's what today is going to be. So expect these highs to eventually climb all the way up into the 90-degree range across most of uh, central Indiana. So as you get going, the temperatures are in the 60s and 70s, as uh, Lauren alluded to, and we'll see these temperatures climb pretty quickly with mostly sunny skies here this morning, and we'll be in the uh, mid-70s already by the time we get to 9, 10 o'clock and then into the mid 80s most likely by the noon hour. So while it's going to be a hot day, the humidity is a little bit lower today and each day this week so far, we have had isolated storms in the forecast in the afternoon hours. Uh, today we've taken those storms out of the forecast. I think they're probably going to fire up uh, in Illinois closer to that band of cloud cover you see that stretches through western Illinois uh, down into the St. Louis area. So for us, mostly sunny skies, high temperatures are right around 90 degrees. We'll keep the forecast dry today, tomorrow, and Saturday, and then we'll bring back in on just about a 20% chance of some isolated storms on the tail end of the holiday weekend. We'll talk more about that weekend forecast coming up in just a little bit, Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic right now as you're heading out the door this Thursday morning. This is a view on the northwest side, I-65, a little south of 38th Street. Traffic is moving along just fine northbound and southbound, and around the metro area, everything's looking pretty good. We'll continue to keep a close eye on your roads though throughout the morning as we get into to the rush hour and let you know if there are any crashes or delays. This virus is on the prowl and it is moving and we are we are living on this on virus time so to speak. Indiana is seeing an increase in COVID-19 hospitalizations and cases, meaning the state will not move forward with stage five of the governor's reopening plan on Saturday as originally scheduled. Instead, Raphael, we will enter stage 4.5. And that's because many things are not changing from stage four. So what really is the difference between stage four and stage 4.5? To sort this all out this morning, our Kelsey Anderson joins us live to explain what it all means. Kelsey, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Raphael and Lauren. So this is actually the first time since the governor announced his plan that we have seen a delay. Every other stage that we've moved into, we've actually moved into a few days earlier, and that is because we are seeing some uptick in COVID-19 cases, and that's why we're moving into stage 4.5 instead of stage 5 like we were supposed to on Saturday. The change in plan means for the next two weeks, bars and nightclubs will be limited to 50% capacity and restaurants will be at 75%. Gatherings will be limited to 250 people, and with the calendar now turned to July, many school districts are set to resume in-person classes in less than 30 days. Holcomb's thoughts on going back to school are clear. He says schools should be prepared to take kids back in. State Health Commissioner Dr. Christina Bach says there is science and data behind this decision. Look at uh, countries or societies that actually closed their schools in the beginning of all this pandemic and those that did not. And those that um, did close their schools did not see a decreased amount of cases nor an increased amount of an issue with their students or their young adults. So we, we really do feel very strongly that students can get back to school. 
Now, Governor Holcomb did say that we aren't seeing an uptick in cases as extreme as other states, and he wants to make sure we don't see that, and that's why he's hitting the pause button on the reopening process just for the next two weeks. Now, Indiana is not the only state taking these steps. Michigan just now announcing that the bars will be closed in some parts of the state. Uh, Arizona, Florida, Texas, and California also taking similar precautions as they hope to uh, slow the spread of COVID-19. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. The time right now is 635. After months of pressure from Call 6 Investigates, Indiana will now publicly release specific information related to COVID-19 cases in nursing homes. That includes where people are dying and where those outbreaks are happening. Families with loved ones in nursing homes have asked for that information. And since April, Call 6 has been asking the state to publish the data broken down by facility. But the state continually refused, citing privacy concerns. So it came as a surprise when leaders changed their stance. Recently, both the largest associations that represent long-term care facilities and AARP, who advocates for the residents in these facilities, have expressed their support of providing facility-level information. As we have all learned, responding to this pandemic requires us to continually evaluate our approaches and when appropriate to change them. This is one of those times. In May, Call 6 Investigates filed a formal complaint with the state's public access counselor about the lack of transparency on this issue. The Family and Social Services Chief Medical Officer says a dashboard of preliminary information should be made available to the public around mid-July. The time now is 636 here on Good Morning Indiana and this morning there's a new campaign to get Hoosiers to wear masks. It's called Mask Up. The governor is not mandating face coverings but is recommending that people wear them. The state is asking people to share on social media why they are wearing a mask. I wear my mask for my parents. I want to ensure that my family is protecting yours. I wear my mask because I've spent my entire life protecting others. I wear my mask for all of you. Will you wear your mask for us? So this social media campaign is hoping to target people who are getting their news either on their smartphone or Twitter or Facebook. There's a recent number show that there's been a rise in COVID-19 cases among younger Hoosiers. Lauren? And Raphael knew this morning some unemployment claims are being placed on hold due to possible fraud. This impacts people seeking the weekly $600 federal payments that end this month. The Department of Workforce Development is concerned with what it says is an, an unusual increase in those claims. There's no doubt in our mind that we are being impacted and targeted by, um, you know, not just small level claims or small levels of fraudulent claims, but by uh, individuals filing claim after claim after claim, hoping uh, that they can sneak one through. Well, the department's investigation does not impact people filing claims or payments of regular state unemployment. They say they haven't heard from anyone with the city and they're demanding answers. Next, more on why two women are taking police officers to federal court. He made comments on his church's website that critics say were racist. Coming up, what a church pastor is now saying after his superiors take action. It is 638 on your Thursday. Stick around. We'll be right back. Most of our competitors forced your home. That's it. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. The time now is 641, days after two women filed an excessive force lawsuit in federal court against four unnamed Metro police officers. Their attorney is speaking out publicly about the case for the first time. A police arrested Ivory Westfield and Rachel Harding back on May the 31st in downtown Indianapolis after the city imposed a curfew related to the protest. Now this was the scene, this was the scene shortly after the video in which the officers hit Westfield with nightsticks and pepper balls. On Wednesday, their attorney, Terrence Kennard, shared pictures of the injuries that he says Westfield suffered during the arrest. I submit to the community that if you've seen this video, would you accept law enforcement beating an unarmed citizen, a 21-year-old female, leaving such damage to her body that we as a community would accept that as a communal standard that innocent men and women in our community could be summarily beaten with billy clubs 
Now, the Marion County prosecutor declined to file charges against the women. The women, of course, are seeking damages against the city. The Indianapolis Office of Corporation Counsel says it does not comment on pending litigation. A pastor in Carmel has been suspended from public ministry at his Catholic church after writing an inflammatory message about Black Lives Matter protesters. Reverend Theodore Rothrock referred to the protesters as maggots and parasites in a message posted on the website of St. Elizabeth Seton Catholic Church. The post was later taken down and was criticized by the bishop of the diocese of Lafayette. The bishop then announced Rothrock's suspension on Wednesday. The priest is issued a statement saying he did not intend to offend anyone. The group Carmel Against Racial Injustice is planning a protest at the church this Sunday. Well, talking about racism and racial inequality can be really difficult, so RTV6 and our partners with Radio One hope to change that. Lauren, it can be a difficult discussion, but that's why tonight we'll be airing a commercial-free one-hour town hall called A Conversation About Race Connecting Central Indiana. A panelist will discuss a number of things, specifically, where are we right now? How do we move forward and how to deal with interactions with law enforcement? I had a chance to speak with Mayor Joe Hawksett and IMPD Chief Randall Taylor to get their views on the Black Lives Matter movement and what it means to them, here's what they had to say. You cannot affirmatively say that all lives matter unless and until you are willing to acknowledge that black lives matter. Black lives do matter and, and you know, I will admit when I first heard that, um, I didn't totally understand really what it all it meant until I looked deeper into it and realized that, uh, you know, what the mayor said is true. Uh, black lives do indeed matter. Uh, you know, I think the tendency is sometimes to say all lives matter. Um, but I, I now understand that, uh, like the mayor said, if black lives don't matter, then really no lives matter at all. So, uh, Many voices to be heard in this powerful discussion. Again, you could watch the full virtual town hall, a conversation on race connecting central Indiana. That's tonight at 7. It will air right here on our TV6 as well as our digital platforms. It will also be simulcast on three Radio 1 stations. Well, the 4th of July weekend is almost here and many Hoosiers are planning to hit the road to celebrate. But the pandemic will make things a little different than what we're used to. Next, our Alyssa Donovan has what you need to know if you're traveling this holiday weekend. Todd. And over the course of this holiday weekend, Lauren, the heat is going to continue to build across not only central Indiana, but much of the Midwest. Potentially, the hottest stretch of weather we have seen since 2012 is going to settle in. We'll talk all about coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. The time now is 6.45. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. To Keller. Keller and Keller. The time now is 6.47, and Lauren and I welcome you back to Good Morning Indiana. And many people, Lauren, are expected to hit the road this weekend for the 4th of July. Yeah, and our Alyssa Donovan explains what you can expect and how you can stay safe if you plan to take a trip for the holiday weekend. If you are planning to travel this holiday weekend, the CDC recommends you think ahead and plan for safety. The CDC recommends if you plan to travel this holiday weekend, check the latest COVID-19 numbers of your destination first. Are they on the rise? Are beaches or other tourist attractions closed? If you plan to stay at hotels or Airbnbs, make sure you ask about their cleaning process. Find out how often they're disinfecting and if additional precautions are being taken. Bring a mask and cleaning supplies with you as well as hand sanitizer. 97% of travelers will be driving, that's according to AAA. So when you step up to the pump, you may want to use a plastic bag or glove when grabbing the gas handle. And also be aware of social distancing guidelines. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Hey, Alyssa, thank you so much. So listen up, everybody. Tenderloin Tuesdays will continue in Hamilton County this year with a twist. Instead of restaurants offering discounts, this summer's campaign will focus on encouraging the community to support local restaurants, which is always a great idea. You can find a list of places on the Tenderloin Trail on our website, theindiechannel.com. And Todd, as far as I'm concerned, they could also be Tenderloin Thursdays. 
<laughs> I think any day could be tenderloin, uh, whatever day you want to call it. But yeah, with the alliteration, tenderloin Thursday, that sounds uh, pretty good as well. All right, as you know, it's race weekend here in central Indiana at IMS with both the IndyCar and the NASCAR series running races, unfortunately without any fans. So uh, that's why I picked the checker flag for you. And it's going to be a hot one out there at the track uh, for the drivers and all the crew members and people working uh, out there at IMS. Unfortunately, the fans uh, won't be theirs, but it may be a good uh, weekend to watch it from the air condition and the comfort of your home uh, because we are looking at potentially the longest stretch of heat we've seen here with 90 degree temperatures or higher since 2012 and to go along with all the heat that we'll be dealing with pretty small rain chances so they will get all those races in at IMS you don't have to worry about uh, any of them getting washed out here's the view from downtown to the north a beautiful start to our day look at all that sunshine the visibility unlimited not a lot of humidity this morning that came down uh, yesterday and overnight and just a few fair weather clouds temperatures this morning actually in the 60s in northern and eastern locations 64 in Peru as well as Richmond a little warmer in the city at 73 degrees Bloomington currently sitting at 71. So as we work our way throughout the day today, high temperatures are going to be hovering right around that 90 degree mark for much of the afternoon. And I do think at some point between three and five o'clock, our temperature will spike higher than that 89 that you see there and get us up into the 90 to 91 degree range uh, this afternoon. Yesterday we got to the 90s and so I think we should be able to get there today with lower humidity levels. You notice this band of cloud cover off to our west. It's shrinking right now, but but I think that's probably where the storms are going to fire up today. So that's another change we have in our forecast. We've eliminated the storms uh, from our area. And I do think, again, they'll flare up just off to our west. Uh, but that's a change because every day so far uh, this week, we've had storms in the forecast going forward. Looking ahead to our 4th of July a weekend, look at the temperatures, 92 to 93 degrees in the city. Some areas could be getting close to 95 degrees during the day on Sunday. And just a spot storm chance in the forecast as we work our way into Sunday afternoon. And then we'll keep some spot storm chances in the forecast for next week. But straight across the board, 90 degree temperatures. Again, I think it's the first time I put together a seven day planning forecast that has 90s for each day since 2012. And to be honest with you, if this was a 10-day forecast, we may be taking the 90s out 10 days. It's going to be a real long stretch of heat. So keep that in mind as you start to plan out your holiday weekend and beyond. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a live look right now at traffic. This is I-70 near State Road 267, where traffic is moving along up to speed, both eastbound and westbound. You can see some construction equipment out there this morning. Keep in mind, if you're using I-70 as part of your holiday travels. We still have the westbound links closed between the downtown area at the south split all the way over to 465 and heading towards the airport on the west side. That's for a long-term closure expected to wrap up at the end of this month. So keep that in mind. You can use the collector ramps as a detour and 465. Stick around. We'll be right back after the short break. The RTD6 app on your phone or streaming device. Well, it is throwback Thursday time, and the mall has often been a place to hang out, Raphael, regardless of whether or not yes. you're shopping. And 35 years ago this week, malls across the area got a very special visitor. And of course, it was Lady Liberty herself. <laughs> Check her out in her full glory. This, a replica of the Statue of Liberty, made several stops during a tour of central Indiana. And of course, our friend Derek Thomas was right there to tell the story. About 40 Guy and Creek Middle School students created this 24-foot, 500-pound patriotic figure, and it stands for all to see in a place where all Americans from all backgrounds visit, the shopping mall, sort of the New York Harbor of the 80s. It took three months to build the grand old lady. She has a wooden frame and is covered with paper mache and a plaster coating. It is the brainchild of art teacher Glenn Litz. It gave them an awareness, um, awareness of their heritage and awareness of some of the particulars involved in America in the 1800s and how America and the other countries work hand in hand.
Well, middle schoolers. The middle schoolers from Pike Township used the mall tour to raise money toward the restoration of the real Statue of Liberty that was completed back in 1986. And she is the real thing, Lauren and Todd, as you know, quite a sight there in New York Harbor. L Lady Liberty stands tall and is <laughs> always something to go visit if you can. So my recommendation if you visit okay. the Big Apple. Very great. Right. Well, if you are in the Circle City today, it's going to be a hot one. So let's get one more check of our forecast with Todd. Yeah, I second that, Raphael. Been in the crown of uh, Lady Liberty there in New York Harbor. Ellis Island, too. Check that out if you head to New York City. Here is your seven-day planning forecast. Lauren, as you mentioned, a lot of heat around not only today, but all the way through the holiday weekend into next week with high temperatures in the 90s. Todd, thanks. We are back in 25 minutes and all throughout Good Morning America with local news, weather, and traffic updates. We hope you have a great Thursday. Stay cool out there.